In this parametric building tutorial, uh, I want to show you how you can model this uh, 12K1299, which I will put also the link to the website in the description, and you can also check it out. Uh, I'm going to model this in Grasshopper. As you can see here, this parametric building has some entrance, so those are a, simply a point attractor at the start, and at the top of that, there's also another point that just pushes those boxes in. So uh, how can we model this in Grasshopper? So the parametric building uh, which we can model this uh, here in Grasshopper you can see that I can change the location of those points. Uh, we can also change the number of those boxes and we can simply change the distribution of that point attractors and finally have uh, those meshes as you can see here we can have them uh, okay let's just put this in the shaded mode we can have them in rhino so to model this in grasshopper first uh, what i'm going to do is to simply define okay let's just delete this go to the surface and in the primitive we have a plane surface and this is going to be the base surface of the uh, building so I'm going to put okay let's just put the bifocals plug in here and the plane of this uh, building is going to be an XZ direction so I'm going to give this an XZ plane and let's just make this X size and the Y size that is going to be the size of the building so we can simply control that by changing those numbers and defining the dimensions okay so the next part is to uh, define the point attractor so I'm going to define uh, uh, three points which uh, simply in this model you can also see here uh, there are two points down here and one up so what I'm going to do is to go to evaluate surface tool or you can simply search with evaluate surface and give this to the plane I've explained this in the evaluate surface tutorial so for now we have to right click on the surface and reparameterize this uh, to make the surface uh, the domain of the surface from 0 to 1 and from 0 to 1 so let's just make this an MD slider and give this to the point talked about this in the previous tutorials and you can see that we can control this from 0 0 to 1 to 1 and we can locate that point uh, wherever we want and then we can just define two other points with the shift key to give this here put this down maybe here and another one here okay so these are the point attractors and you can see that we have them from the value at surface tool. Uh, the next step is to produce uh, uh, planes or rectangles on the surface so we can extrude them in the y direction. That's uh, in the minus y direction exactly. So what I'm going to do is to use the isotrim tool. And you can also find this from the surface utility tool with the isotrim so you can see it here uh, when we give this to the surface we can divide this into uh, in the u and the v direction so I'm going to also give a divide domain to the domain goes to the plane and that is exactly the surface we want to divide and that goes to the domain too uh, I've explained this uh, explained about uh, and talked about this in several tutorials and also you can uh, have different examples of this in the grasshopper course for but for now let's just turn this off and give this a u count and a v count so i'm going to give this different numbers and we can divide this into small surfaces which you can see here when i bake them we will have them here okay so this is the first step we want to make and what we want to do is to extrude them in the minus y direction but before we do this let me explain 
a little bit up, uh, about mesh. So first, if I bake these surfaces, and let's just save this. Okay, I'm going to save this, and let's just save this as title. Okay, so you can see that here we have uh, nearly two megabytes of a file. So let's just delete this. And now I'm going to use another tool called Simple Mesh. So a simple mesh will simply uh, convert a, a three-edge three -edge polygon or four-edge. That's uh, the meaning of the mesh. Uh, you can convert those from NURBS into mesh with Simple Mesh. So remember, you can you always use the Simple Mesh tool to convert a triangle or rectangle into a uh, mesh. So I'm going to give this a simple mesh and bake this in Rhino. So you can see now we have meshes here and let's just save this. And now you can see that it's going to be 400 kilobytes. So that's going to decrease the size of your file. It's going to be uh, optimized and you can also change the model faster when you work with mesh. So remember you can always convert a surface if it's a triangle or rectangle to a mesh. Okay, now we want to use the point attractor technique to extrude them. I've explained this in several tutorials. I've also uh, talked about the attractors in a complete section in the Grasshopper course. But for now, what I'm going to do is to uh, take a centroid of those meshes. So we have all of those centroids. And the technique, the point attractor technique is to use a CP point and give the grid of points to the points and give the point attractors to the cloud. And I've explained this. Uh, the reason we are using closest point is that each of those points are searching for one of those point attractors and it's going to select the closest one so and give the distance out. So what we're going to do is to use the closest point or CP point to use that point attractor. So I'm going to give the centroids or the grid of points to that and the point attractors to the clouds and now we have the distance and now we can start to extrude them in the y direction okay for the mesh uh, the best technique if you want to extrude the mesh because uh, grasshopper doesn't really have uh, great great utilities for the for that for extruding mesh but if you install the weaverword plugin which i will put also uh, in the website so you can download this from the website uh, you can find after installing this you will have the weaver bed uh, mesh thicken so always you can use this to thicken mesh and let's just use this and give this to the mesh and you can see that I can give this a number and this will just extrude that mesh uh, the number I've just gave this in the minus y direction. If you want to go in the y direction, you can simply go to the distance and expression. And let's just give this a minus x and that will go outwards. Okay, so let's just take this out. And let's uh, talk and let's just make this point attractor technique work. So we have this distance. The first technique we talked about the point attractor is to remap this and you have to download the remap from the website. So you will have to remap this between zero and one. Uh, then we had to uh, connect this to a graph mapper. So, and a graph mapper will uh, basically change the distribution uh, between zero and one to something else. You can also uh, check out the graph mapper uh, tutorial, which I've explained this. Okay, and then we just, at the end, again, remap this. I'm going to explain this again to the minimum and the maximum extrusion and then simply give this to the distance. So remember, we do this to make uh, the distance, basically uh, the distribution of the distance, non-linear uh, non to the graph mapper, and then we remap this to the minimum and the maximum we want. So let's just do this. We want a remap. By the way, you can always download the remap tool by simply going to uh, parametric3d.com backslash en backslash remap. And you can always download this from the 
uh, from this link. You can also download the Viverbit plugin from parametric treaty.com backslash en backslash Viverbit. Okay, so this is the link. These are two simple links you can use <clears throat> always to download the Viverbit and the remap tool. So let's just get to this. And this is the remap. So that is zero to one. And now we use that graph mapper to make this distribution a little bit long, uh, non linear. So I'm going to change this. And then again, remap this back to maybe 12.5 and the maximum maybe to 50. Okay. And if I give this to distance, you can see that this does not affect the mesh. And that is because each of those meshes, 480 meshes, uh, has to go to 480 different groups. So when you want to use the Viva with Mesh Thicken and you have something like this and 480 values, remember you have to graft this. Uh, okay, let's just draw this up. Okay, graft this mesh and graft this distance up. So each of those meshes is going to go to each of those distances. So now I can simply right click here and graft and graft and now you can see that this is extruding in the y uh, positive uh, on the minus y direction. So let's just change the building to something more real. So let's just give this a bigger height and let's just decrease the number of the maximum and let's just make this smaller. Okay. So now you can see that this point uh, these point attractors are affecting the model simply by using the mesh. If you want to do this in uh, extruding this surface in the y direction, it's going to be really, really slow. So let me just show you. If I extrude this in the y direction, so we're going to go to the minus x here, so we can go in the minus y direction, and let's just give this uh, remap to this one okay we will have the extrusion but remember the time to calculate this is about 75% uh, of all of the algorithm so let's just change this and see that it's going to be slow and because whenever I change this the extrusion is a nerves ex extrusion and it's going to make the process a little bit slow so let's just delete this and you can see how fast we can move this so a mesh is always uh, an optimized way if you have simple geometry you always you can use mesh to produce the geometry okay so let's just decrease the maximum number and play with this graph mapper uh, remember you can always play uh, with different graph mappers you can combine them so uh, if you want you can also give this a uh, sign wave let's just give this a sine wave you can see I can produce a sine wave here uh, we can also go back to busier and combine this with another graph and get, then give this to the remap and see that this will really affect the model here we go you can see Let's just go to the display section and connect custom preview to that so you can see this, okay? And this is why the graph mapper is really going to affect your model and we can always combine them. So let's just get back to this one and connect that. And you can see that we can simply put different point attractors. We can even increase that to as uh, much as we want so you can simply use this technique to uh, define a point attractor on your model okay we can just put this down and you can see that these are the point attractors we can turn the area centroid off and you can see that these are the points and uh, at the end we can simply bake this and let's just close this and you can see that we have this in Rhino we can have uh, all of those meshes in our model. So this was the tutorial of how to make this uh, K1299 model in Grasshopper. It's a parametric building. You can see how easy it is to use the point attractor technique. 
uh, to produce uh, building and thank you for watching and subscribing to our channel remember like uh, our videos because it will just make the YouTube algorithm to suggest our videos uh, more often to you and also remember to subscribe and if you have any questions or even ideas about this you can also uh, comment on this video and thank you for watching